How to rebuild a vintage steam toy, part 10. Fitting the safety valve and burner wicks, steam testing the engine and painting the corners of the base. I bought this safety valve via eBay from a company called Clevedon Steam. I've dealt with them before, very fast delivery, good quality products. Which is all you need really, and here is the safety valve, very nicely made. I need this safety valve to blow off quite low though. As you can see in this clip, I'm removing the two lock nuts, which will allow me to withdraw the spring, because I'm going to shorten the spring just a very small amount on my one inch belt sander. And after the deed was done in this clip, I'm reassembling the safety valve. I had to guess it should blow off at around £25 per square inch, which is OK. Time to fill the boiler with water. I'm removing the blanking plug for two reasons. One, to let the water flow into the boiler more easily. And the other reason is I need to fit the whistle valve into the hole that was occupied by the blanking plug. It doesn't take much water to fill the boiler. And for this quick steam test, I don't want the boiler to be full anyway. Time now to fit the whistle valve. This copper washer will make it so that the whistle valve is in the correct position once it's fitted. In this clip, I'm screwing the whistle valve into the boiler after a quick application of Loctite 542. Now the engine's more or less complete and ready to go. I just need to put the wicks into the burner. Once again, I bought these wicks via eBay. They came from Germany. And the good thing about them is the centre part of the wicks is made from glass fibre, so it won't burn away. Filling this burner is a bit bizarre. Originally I poured the methylated spirit onto the top of the burner because the inlet hole to the tank, which is right in the middle between the wicks, is quite small. In the end I found the quickest method was to pour the methylated spirit onto the wicks. Once the burner was about half full, it was time to clean up the burner itself and also the bench. The last thing you want is a pool of methylated spirit on the bench to catch fire when you light the burner. With the burner burning nicely, it's time to put it inside the firebox area. And here it is, burning quite well. The flame's a bit yellow, and I think that inside this tank at some stage it's had some other fuel in there, which is now contaminating the methylated spirit. If this engine was going to be run frequently, which it isn't because really it's well past its sell-by date as far as an engine's concerned, the flame would stop being yellow and become a bluey colour. In a previous series, when I rebuilt a Bassett Loke engine, it took two full bottles of methylated spirit through the burner before it ran cleanly. In this clip, I've filled the lubricator with some of my steam oil and machine oil mixture. I find the very thick and gloopy steam cylinder oil to be a little bit too much for small engines, especially the 1000 grade steam oil that I normally use for running slightly bigger cast iron engines. There's not much pressure yet, but I'll try the whistle. Because the manometer doesn't work, I don't know how much pressure's in this boiler, but it won't be much. And the engine is soon persuaded to run by turning the flywheel by hand. To the viewer who mentioned, I see there's still some run out on the flywheel. Yes, there is. The flywheel is a bit of a problem. I couldn't machine the groove and that was off centre, which makes it look worse. I'll make some adjustments to this by not tightening the grub screw quite as much as it currently is. I'm going to stop talking for a while as usual and just let you listen to the engine.
Not unsurprisingly, there was a very slight leak on the water gauge. So here I'm scraping out the filler to see where the leak's coming from exactly. And once the engine's fully cooled, I intend to fix this leak using some JB Weld. By scraping out the filler, as you can see, the flow of the leak increases, which I want it to do because I need to know exactly where it's coming from. As always, I'm amazed at the amount of heat that you can get from these small spirit burners. And because of the water leak, I've actually blown out the burner, so there's no fire under the boiler at all, yet the engine's still running quite well. To sum up, this is a really old antique engine, very, very old I would think. I wanted to retain as many of the original parts as possible, including this flywheel, which was not the original flywheel fitted to the engine, but it's the flywheel that was fitted to this engine, and that's how it's getting returned to the owner. Running this engine regularly on steam is not a good idea because it's a very old engine, and the original mechanism is quite worn and not very strong. I want the engine to look pretty much like it did when I first received it, but obviously in much better condition. So to finish off the job, I'm now painting the corners red. This is what the engine looked like from episode one. At first, I turned the job down. I said, I can't fix this. I mean, look at the state of it. But after a bit of persuasion, I relented. I thought, well, I like a challenge. I hope the owner is happy with the engine. Now the painting of the corners of the base is finished, the engine's starting to look quite good. I intend to fix the leak on the water gauge and adjust the motion slightly to get it a little bit more in line, but I'm not too hopeful about that. Then I'm just going to run the engine for the full duration of the video without me narrating it at all. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.